bobbing to your right, it's all your lower body that does the work. So when you're bobbing to your right, you're gonna turn your body to the right this way and then come back. But the most important thing is to keep your eye out here. Lower body does the work, dip down and turn. Now, bobbing to your left, same concept here. It's your rear foot, your knee, your foot, your knee, and your hip that does all the work. So you just turn it this way, which is essentially turning your center line out of the way, and then right back to center. Typically, when you come back to center, you're coming back with a punch. Um, you can also, as you're turning, hit with the right hand, come back with the left hand. Yeah, there you go, but you gotta turn. Keep that knee bent, good. What you don't wanna do is lock out that back leg, keep your knees bent, so it looks like this. When I'm jabbing, you're gonna bob to your left. There you go, and come back, hook, yes. Okay, so you always wanna come back to center with something. Okay, bob to your left, your left. There you go, <laughs> come back and hook, good. Now jab cross, one, two, good, jab cross. Now bob to your left. Come back, hook cross. Nice. Okay, jab cross. Jab cross. Bob to your left. Come back, hook cross. Good. Let's do it again. Jab cross. Bob left. Hook cross. That's it. Jab cross. Bob to your left. Hook cross. Good. Now block to the body, uppercut. Up, cross hook. These are very typical block. punching drills. We actually call them mitt work because you can see that Kathy's got mitts on her hands and is using them as targets for okay. the punches that Courtney's giving here. You know what, this is something that they can do with us here. If you haven't already done so, standing around and shadow boxing with them as they were doing their punches, why don't you join us now? Get up out of your chair, move the coffee table aside, and Kat's gonna take us through some basic punches that uh, you can practice on your own. Awesome, let's talk about our basic stance first. We wanna make sure your feet have some, some space between them. You don't want them too close and you don't want them lined up in a line like this because you tend to lose your balance that way. Face a little more forward toward me. Good, that's it. Now your hands should be up protecting your face. You're gonna work that left hand straight out, straight back. Okay, left foot's forward, right foot's in the back. Stance is even, your weight should be balanced right in the middle. Hands are up, good. Work that left hand straight out, straight back. That's your jab. Jab, jab, good. Let's do five more. One, good. Two, three, four, five, good. Now the right hand, you're gonna turn. Turn that right hand, it's gonna come straight out again and straight back. So you turn your foot, your knee, and your hip into, toward me. Cross straight out, straight back, good. Starting here and finishing here, your hands should be right up at your face, okay? Right hand straight out, good, straight back. Straight out. Straight back, let's do five more. One, two, three, four, five, good. Now let's go back to the jab, jab, good, jab, jab. Let's do 10 more, jab, jab. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now jab cross, one turn cross. Jab, turn, cross. That's it, one, two, one, two, one, two. Always bring it back to your face. One, two, good, five more. One, two, three, four, five, good. Now let's talk about the hook. By the way, I'm, asso I'm assuming that breathing is a requirement? <laughs> Or a suggestion. Breathing is vital. Breathing is vital. Yes. So, so as we're doing this. As you're this, striking, you're breathing out. Got it. Okay. As the jab comes out, the, the breath comes out. Because I was noticing after like doing three and a four in a row pretty fast, my, I started to hold my breath a little bit. I had wow. to remind myself. So if you're feeling the same way, make sure that you're breathing. <laughs> yes. Make sure you breathe. Make sure you're breathing. <laughs> jab straight out, straight back. Uh, on that jab, breathe. Shh. Jab. Shh. Jab. Shh. Now jab cross. Shh. Jab cross, good. From that cross, I want you to pretend you're pulling back on a rope and that's gonna launch that left hand forward and around. So your foot, left foot needs to turn with the left jab. Okay, uh, left hook, sorry. Turn, hook, and come back. Turn and hook, come back. So let's practice, right hand, cross, turn and hook. Cross, hook, cross, hook. Now notice, both my feet are turning. I, my right foot turns with the cross, my left foot turns with the hook, and you're breathing every time. Cross, hook, cross, hook, cross, hook. Now let's go back one more time. Jab, now cross, now turn and hook. Can we do one more? Jab, cross, hook, good. Beautiful. Okay, I've got a sweat going already. <laughs> 
We'll be coming right back and putting this into use in the rest of this lesson. Muay Boran, also known as Muay Thai, a very interesting style of martial arts that comes to us from the area of the Southeast Asian peninsula known as Thailand. Also, some of the surrounding countries like Laos and, and Burma develop similar fighting styles. And what's unique about this particular fighting style is its name. It's known as the art of the eight limbs, meaning we have two fists and two feet, but also two elbows and two knees. And these are used as primary weapons in this style of fighting. This style of fighting has been around for centuries, but has only recently made its way into the West here. And so many people have only barely seen what this style of fighting is really like. And so we're very fortunate to have with us Coach Kathy Long, five-time world women's kickboxing champion, two-time Black Belt Magazine Hall of Fame inductee, Inside Kung Fu Magazine Hall of Fame inductee, master in Kung Fu Sansu, world-class coach in Muay Thai kickboxing. Nicknamed the Queen of Mean, the Princess of Pain, the Punisher. Anyway, Kathy, it's good to see you here. Thank you. We also have our student, Courtney, here, who's going to help us out. And you, who could just follow us in all the drills that Kathy's going to do for us. Kat, what should we start with? Uh, let's start with proper stance. Okay. Okay. So, on that stance, it's really important that you have equal amount of weight. You don't want too much weight on the front or too much weight on the back. Um, I like to, with boxing, they like to set up sideways because they want to thin out their target and, and lessen the center line attacks. Well, with Muay Thai, you need to utilize that back leg for knees and kicks. So you want to be a little more forward, okay? Your feet should be about two to two and a half feet apart and both knees bent. While, while your knees are bent, you should be able to shift forward and back, forward and back. Now, with that, the back heel should be slightly off the ground, just a little bit. Okay? It doesn't doesn't have to be super high, but it's important that it's off the ground. And the reason for that is you want to be able to push off and step, okay? So while I'm here, I should be able to shift my weight forward and back. Good. Okay, while you're in this stance, you should have your hands up, resting right about, right about at your jawline. What you don't want is way too high or way too low or super stiff. You want to be relaxed in your stance. Poised, alert, but relaxed, okay? Hands up. What we want to work here is the jab. Because my left foot is forward, my left hand becomes my jab. It's always thrown with the lead hand. Okay, jabs are thrown straight out. So you tuck your chin down into your shoulder here, and the hand comes out. Whether it turns flat or it stays standing, either way is fine. Okay, and you want to bring your hand straight back to your jawline. As you're striking outward, you want to breathe outward. Okay, jab comes out, shh, breathe, and bring it back. Do everything nice and slow right now, no big rush. What's very important is proper form. That redu reduces the risk of being hurt. Hands up, straight out, straight back. Good. What you don't want is your elbow coming out first. That's called a big telegraph. So let your knuckles lead. As the knuckles come out, your chin is down. Straight out here, straight back. Again, straight out, straight back. Good. On the cross. They call it a cross because it's traveling across your body. And though it does take a little longer to throw the strike, it generates a lot more power, especially when you take your foot, your knee, and your hip, and you turn into that strike. So as the cross comes out, it comes straight out here. Your chin, again, is tucked down. It's almost like my right eye is lined up with my right knuckle here. It's straight back. Good. As you turn on that cross, keep your weight balanced. Keep both knees bent. Both knees have to be bent. Very important. Bring it straight back. Good. Straight out, straight back. Good. Now on the hook, the lead hook, because there's lots of hooks. Uppercuts are hooks, overhand rights are hooks, body hooks. But a lead hook to the face, in this case, you want to turn. As my left foot turns, my left knee turns, my left hip turns, and that's where the power comes from. It's so it, all in the hips. It's, fairly, it's probably fairly obvious, but it, it actually occurred to me as something that I hadn't thought about, is that if I'm going to pivot on this front foot, I've got to shift my weight to the back foot first. You don't shift your weight necessarily to the back foot, but what you want to do is be able to pivot comfortably, keeping your weight centered. So I have to drive that and, and then it'll... Do you want me on both toes? 
No. No. Actually, so that's why the right heel will go down. The back heel goes right. down. Whether it's the left or right in front, it doesn't matter. Got it. But what's important is the back heel goes down, the left heel comes the front heel comes yeah. up. And I'm basically just turning this way because when I'm throwing a hook in the air, I'm stopping right where a person's face would be in front of me. I don't want to punch through like this. I want to pretend that there's always somebody in front of me. Always. And they're punching and kicking back at me, and we'll get into defense on that as well. Got it. So as the jab comes out, it's going straight out to, if you're looking in a mirror, it's one of the best ways to practice. Because you'll see if you're not pivoting correctly, you'll see if your hands are down, you'll see if your weight is off, you'll be able to see it. And of course, feeling it is, is key. Once you feel it and you understand it, then you can correct it yourself. Can we okay. turn maybe and do this once this sure. way? Sure. So as the jab see comes a different out, angle, yeah. there's no shift of weight on the jab. Elbows tucked in. Hand goes straight out, chin is tucked into the shoulder. Okay, now see how your heel is up? Mm -hmm. Put that heel down, lift that heel up. So there's no pivot of weight. Straight out and straight back. Good, your weight stays centered e equally. When I turn on my cross, my weight does not come forward. Turn on your cross. So that right foot now turns in, which turns your knee in, which turns your hip forward, which allows for more power. That's what I want, just like that turn. Good and then bring it straight back. But don't, don't plant your heel down. It's a common mistake people make when they're throwing their cross and they're bringing it back. They wanna drop that foot down. No need, you wanna keep it off. Keep that heel up the whole time. Straight out on that cross, straight back. Straight out, straight back. You know what, Good. let's bring in the action cam so we can get a real close look at what this looks like. Sure. Okay, let's get a close-up on pivoting with the cross and the hook um, and maintaining balance and keeping your weight even on both legs, okay? So when, when she throws her cross, she's going to pivot her right foot and turn in, and that pivots her knee, which turns her hip forward, which allows more power on the cross this way. And then as she comes back, she's going to plant that heel down, plant it down, and turn in hook. Keep that uh, too much weight. Too much weight on, there you go. You want your weight even on both legs. Pivot this way. That's it. So it stops right where the person's face would be. So if you're throwing your cross the, toward me here, good. Keep your knees bent. That's it. Now turn that hip in more with the punch. There you go. You want to affect my space. Turn and hook. That's it. Just like that. Keep that knee bent. Good. Turn and cross. Turn and hook. Good. Turn and cross. Turn and hook. That's perfect. Turn and cross. Beautiful. Keep your knees bent. Relax. Turn and hook. Good. Turn and cross. Right here, good, hook, and that's how it should look. Okay, so pivoting on the cross again, one more time, pivot on that cross, good, and come back and hook. A great way to practice this, if you're facing forward, is put your hands down. You don't need punching to pivot it. So what's really important about pivoting is that <clears throat> your weight is even. When I throw my cross, my right foot is gonna turn in, which turns my knee in, which turns my hip in, so turn that. Practice, keep both knees bent. My weight is equally distributed on both legs. And when I throw my hook, I'm gonna plant that cross down, my heel down, turn, and there's my hook. Okay, plant this down, come back, there's your cross. Just think your foot, your knee, and your hip all go together. And because your upper body is attached, it has no, no reason not to go with it, so it will always go with. So when I'm throwing my cross here with that pivot, it all goes together. All one fluid motion. As the foot turns, the knee turns, the hip turns, the punch comes straight out and you breathe. Okay, then you pull it back. There's turn that breathing hook. again. Yes, there's that breathing again. It's super important, gang. Keep the weight <laughs> balanced. Keep your weight balanced. The foot, knee, and hip have to work together. A lot of people think that all the punching comes from your upper body, especially guys, they wind up. Don't. Let your whole body throw the punch, not just your, not just your hand. Okay, so as, it, as you turn, there's the cross. As you pivot, there's your hook. Here's your cross, here's your hook. Now, this pivoting also helps you uppercut and overhand right and head hook, body hook, everything. So in that, re in that regard, if you're gonna throw body hooks, let's turn this way a little bit so we can, they can see. You're gonna drop your knees down a little more and shrug your shoulders because anytime your hands leave your body, you're creating an opening for your opponent to capitalize on should you spar. So while you do that, to minimize the opening is that you protect yourself as much as possible. When you're throwing a body hook, you don't want to stand tall and punch low. You're opening your face up. What you want to do instead is drop down a little bit and throw your hook with your chin tucked into your shoulder to the body. 
okay? And then pivot, turn to the body. Same thing, same pivot with the cross and the hook. You're throwing a right hook to the body and a left hook to the body. Right hook to the body, left. Okay, don't forget to breathe. Right hook, left hook. Right hook, left hook. Now, that translates to uppercuts. Same pivot, exactly the same. So when I throw my right uppercut, there's my pivot, same. When I throw my left uppercut, there's my pivot, same, okay? Don't lean. Common mistake people do when they throw uppercuts is they'll turn that hip this way and they'll lean back. And they think that's giving them power. But instead what they're doing is arcing their back and losing their balance. Okay, that's the last thing you want. Uppercut this way, this way. Keep your butt slightly out, slightly out. Just a little, okay? Up, up. So now left hook to the head, right cross. Left uppercut, right uppercut. Left hook, right cross, pivot. Make sure you pivot. You're lifting your heel up, but you're not pivoting. Turn, you gotta turn. Left hook, that's, the, that's what I want. Right cross, left uppercut, right cross. We do one more. Left hook, right uppercut, left hook. Nice. Nice. All right, I need a break. <laughs> the proper form, as Kathy points out, is essential for both the effectiveness of the technique itself, but also to prevent injury and even to sort of good biomechanics, like the whole breathing thing. You know, as you were pointing out, to breathe as I'm delivering the punch, right? It just makes me feel more comfortable. I don't get my breath stuck in my throat. I'm able to continue. I don't want to run out of steam while I'm sparring with somebody. Right. Right. So proper form is the foundation. Is that correct? Completely. Completely the foundation. Well, balance and proper form, they both work together. You can't have one without the other. And they both start at the very beginning of everything that you do. Good. So we'll be using this concept as we go forward with the next lesson. Yes, absolutely. It's a whole nother lesson, learning to punch while you're going backwards, learning how to kick while you're going backwards. But essentially, you want to move around laterally, left to right, okay? So as you move into your left, your left foot steps first. Good. As you move into your right... Cat's putting right Courtney into first. motion. Already I can see the lesson that we've already learned, that balance is essential. In fact, when we talk about fundamentals, it's important to not separate balance as a concept away from fundamental techniques as a concept. In fact, they're both, this, they're, they're like woven together so intimately that you can't separate them. And that's how we're going to get into movement because fights are never fought just standing in one place. Right? <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> Unless you want to be a punching bag, which is never a good thing, but you know. Yeah, not on Wednesday. Not a human punching no, bag, no. no. <laughs> we don't want that. I've been that before, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we start getting moving around then? Okay, so with your stance... Let's talk about basic movement. A rule of thumb, not written in stone. But a rule of thumb is if I want to move forward, my forward foot, whichever one is in front, whether it's your left foot or your right foot, doesn't matter. Whichever one's in front steps first, and then you bring the back one with you. Common mistake beginners make is they'll drag that back foot. Okay, don't drag it, just step. Okay, so if I move forward, I step. Okay, baby steps. Anytime you're moving, um, it's important to move in small steps. Economy of movement, like they say in boxing, okay? You, you don't want to have gigantic movements. Here, as I step forward, small step, okay? If I step back, my back foot steps first. If I step to my right, my right foot steps first. If I step to my left, my left foot steps first, okay? And I just bring that back foot with you. Like if you go on a trip, you take your luggage. <laughs> I know, but it's true. It's, they, they get it when I say that. I have a whole new appreciation for that back foot now. That's right. Don't forget your luggage. <laughs> so stepping forward and jabbing at the same time. So as the foot lands, the jab is landing. And as the jab is landing, the breath is out. So as you're impacting, as you're stepping, the hand is impacting, the breath is out. Okay? Jab this way. If I want to step backwards, same thing. My back foot steps back with the jab. One. Okay? Stepping forward. One. Good, stepping back, one. Commonly, that's the way it works. If I want to move to my left, in, especially in kickboxing and Muay Thai, you don't want to move just to the left. You want to move in a semicircle. You always want to get around to the back of your opponent. You want to be at the advantage and their disadvantage, always. So as I'm stepping to my left, I'm going to step, there's that pivot, okay? 
Now I'm not facing forward anymore, I'm facing at an angle. And the same thing goes again. I want to constantly move around at a semicircle. If I step to my right, my right foot's going to step first, but I don't step up and then to my right. My right foot stays in the back. It stays in the back, and I keep my left foot turning. So I step. As I step, lightly. Go lightly. Don't drag this Don't time. drag your foot. Not this time. I heard you in, in your head the moment I did that. <laughs> hate that. So step. <laughs> he hears my thoughts. Weird. <laughs> I'll try not to do it too much okay. anymore. So back to the left. Step left, pivot. Step and pivot. Step and pivot. Step and pivot. There you go. Step and pivot. Just slightly. Little steps. Step to the right. Good. Step to the right. I'm sliding only because it's slippery. I don't mean to. Step. There you go. Step. Smaller steps. There you go. Back to the front. Okay. So if I move forward, forward foot goes first. If I move back, back foot steps first. If I move to my left, left foot steps first. If I move to my right, right foot steps first. Whichever one is in front doesn't matter. Okay. So, landing that punch. Step, jab. As the foot lands, the jab lands, the breath is out. Jab, 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 jab. Stepping back now. Jab, 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 jab. Moving to your left, jab. Moving to your right, jab. Moving to your left, jab. Move to your left. Dave's going to hit me in the back of the head now. <laughs> I can just feel it. All those times you were mean to me. I know. <laughs> now let's practice the jab cross. If I'm moving forward, I step with the jab, and then I readjust with that cross. As my foot is readjusting, that's when I land my cross. So I step with my jab. As the foot is readjusting with the cross, that's when I throw my right. Okay? So jab, cross, moving forward. One, two. One, two, one, two. Now moving back, same thing. My back foot steps first, so the jab goes with it. One, as I readjust, there's your cross. Step with the right, there's your jab. Readjust with the left, there's your cross. Okay, step back and jab. Readjust, there's your cross. Step back with the jab, readjust with the cross. It's gonna feel a little awkward sometimes. But awkward is often the feeling that you have when you're first beginning something because you're so used to doing it a different way or being in a neutral position or being in just walking position. Yeah. I often say, in the beginning, if it feels right, it's wrong. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Because it's what you're used to doing. Because it's what you're used to doing. Right. And you're learning something new. It's, it's going to feel awkward a little bit. Okay. So let's talk about distance with, uh, with people. Got it. Okay. okay. If we were to be sparring... Right away, I would need to understand and know the length of your arms and the length of your legs. Because if I want to strike you effectively, I have to affect your space. Okay. Got it. Right. Right. right, right, right. But if you, if you stick your arm out and you jab, okay, and I stick my arm out and I jab, I'm not going to reach you. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I have to I know. I like that part. <laughs> <laughs> I have to know the length of his arms and legs in order to be effective. Okay? I have to be able to affect your space. I also have to know the length of my arms and my legs and know where I need to be, which is a whole nother animal. <laughs> right. Right. But in footwork, as we're moving, if he were to step forward and jab, yeah, now step forward and jab at me. There you go, and I step uh -huh. over, okay? So I know the length of his arm. Right now, he has to take a step to reach me, and that's how I time everything. If he doesn't have to take a step to reach me, then I already know that his arms are longer than mine, I'm going to get hit, and he won't, which is not good, because jousting matches work that way. Right. <laughs> yeah. So as he steps forward, I'm going to step over. I have to know the length of his arms and legs. Okay? But that's, again. But this is fundamentals. This is, again, a, a foundation for how all sparring, and in particular, as you said, Muay Thai sparring is, is going to be built upon. Right. Taking this basic footwork into the next level, got to know where I'm at. Yeah, it's important, though. In the beginning, it's, it's important to know and understand the length of their arms and legs and understand that they have to step to reach you in order to time your, what you want to do. So is, is in there the a, beginning, I teach that. Is there a drill that you usually do for length of arms? Absolutely. Let's do that. Yeah, so okay. the drill is this. <laughs> I walk up to you. And <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, I know where you need. I know that I need, now need to be here in order for you to reach me. 
So if you're doing this with a partner, if you have a partner to do this with, or even if you're doing this with mirror work, you can start off in this basic drill, right? So get in your fight stance. Okay. There right. you go. Now there's your jab right there. Right okay. There. Now okay. it's not enough to touch my face with the jab. You have to affect my space. Ah, got That's it. Okay. That's important. All okay. right. So this is where you have the most power. So I need to make sure that I'm here. So you have to take a step to reach me. Uh -huh. And that's how I time everything. So then I would have to you take a step to reach me. Got it. I would practice whatever counter. Because a counter is, um, is a one beat. It's not two beats. If he were to jab at me and I block, no, jab at me, not over there. Jab at me and I stop it and then I hit him back, that's two beats. The block is one, okay. the hit back is two. Okay? For, for timing, and making sure that he has to step to reach me, if I, want to, if I want to hit with one while he's jabbing, I go underneath, boom. He steps and jabs, boom, I go underneath and hit, or I kick, or I knee, or I whatever I want to do. So that's how you practice the timing and the range. Got it, okay. and then what would you, you would switch roles and the other person yeah. would do it? So in the okay. beginning, you, you both set up in your fight stance, okay? okay? Here's his effective jab. So now I know how long his arms are. I take that slight step back. Now I have to visually see, okay, this is where I need to be to make sure he can't reach me. So as that jab comes, boom, I go underneath and I hit, or I hit, or I hit, or I hit, or I hit. <laughs> but I see you slowly, a theme working there. <laughs> you slowly practice. I mean, there's tons of counters. Let's have, have the action cam come in and see the close-up of that counter that you're just talking about. Sure. Okay. okay. Okay, I put on some gloves and Courtney and I are gonna demonstrate just a little bit of timing and how that works and range. First we set up in our fight stance and she throws her jab, put your right hand up, there you go. She throws her jab and I throw my jab and we're roughly the same length in arms, okay? I take a slight step back. Now she has to step forward to reach me on everything that she's doing, on, <clears throat> except for that rear leg. As she steps forward, I'm going to time that counter by hitting to the body. As she jabs at my face, I'm going underneath. She's jabbing where I was, I'm jabbing where she is. As the jab comes, I step in, boom, there's my jab. Okay, she moves around, jab comes, there's my jab. Or she steps into jab, there's my front kick. Or she steps into jab, boom, there's my oblique kick. Okay, or she steps into jab, boom, there's my cross and come back with a hook. As she steps to jab, wait. I'll be nice, go slowly on this one. As she steps into jab, mm, go slowly. I'm gonna split the difference in knee, okay? And that's how you work timing. Okay, now I'm gonna have Courtney practicing all those counters that I was talking about a moment ago. So as I step forward, she's gonna go underneath and jab my face. Jab, girl. As I jab again, step forward and hit. Good, now you can do the same thing with a front kick. Okay, as I step, Yep, front kick here. It's all, it's all good. Right. Yeah, my ribs. Yeah. Remember, don't let me be here, because now I can jab you, you can jab me. You want to be here, okay? So as I step in, that's when you hit, okay? Yep, and you stop me. It's a stop kick, okay? You can do the same thing with an oblique kick, this way, okay? So as I step in, you time that, just like that. Good. So as I step in, you either jab, front kick, or oblique kick, okay? Good. Don't let me touch your face, though. Okay? That's it. Good. Good. I continue to see the basic elements, the basic stances, the basic punching patterns here, the turning of the hips, and most of all, the balance. You can see when the timing is off, the balance goes, or maybe it's the other way around. When the balance goes, the timing is off. All of it. All of it, either yeah. way. So this is the foundation for practicing Muay Brand or Muay Thai, the art of Asian Every martial art, well, almost every martial art, has basic punches and basic kicks. So far in this lesson, we've been jabbing and crossing and hooking and uppercutting, but we've also introduced some basic kicks. Now, the thing is that every different martial arts style will have a slightly different approach to it. A jab in one martial arts style might not look exactly like the jab in another martial arts style. Plus, in Muay Bran or Muay Thai, we're going to introduce a whole other concept. Remember, this is called the art of eight limbs, and so far we've just used four of them. So we've got four more to add to the mix. Basically, though, everything is about gauging the distance, staying in balance, knowing where your opponent is so that you can do the proper counter, and most of all, get away so that you don't get hurt.
Excellent. Okay, so put on your glove. All right. <clears throat> and I'm going to have you demonstrate and work on that drill that we were doing a moment ago. Perfect. So as you step forward to jab, your, your goal, not yet, you want to move. Your mm -hmm. goal is to touch her face. Her okay. goal is to make sure she, you, she doesn't get hit in the face. Okay, so back up just a little bit and just slightly move around. Okay, your job, David, is to reach out and touch her forehead. Her job is to make sure you don't. Good. So you got to understand his reach is longer than yours. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Now you're waiting too long. You're dropping and then you're jabbing. It should all be done in one fluid motion. So as he steps forward to jab, boom, I'm hitting. Notice that I just go right underneath. So as I'm stepping this way, almost sideways into a small horse as I do it. Try it. There you go. That's it. Now move. Don't stand in one spot. There you go. Keep him where he has to step to reach you. That's it. Because if he's... There you go. Too close. One more? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right, good. Very nice. Thank you. Yes, thank you.